Now that you're familiar with the WordPress dashboard, you're ready to start creating and sharing your content with the world. So in this video, we'll take a look at how to add a new post in WordPress. Before we begin, it's important to understand the difference between posts and pages in WordPress. To do that, let's take a look at our sample website, which is using the current default theme for WordPress called 2012. As you can see, it has a very clean design with the title and description of the site at the top and a navigation menu containing links to the pages in your site. Our primary content is on the left and on the right hand side of the page is our sidebar. Now, the primary differences between posts and pages are that posts are blog entries or articles and these are typically sorted chronologically with the newest post at the top. Posts usually appear on your site's blog page, which just happens to be our home page for now. Later, I'll show you how to move your blog to a separate section of your site and then select a static page to serve as your home page. Pages, on the other hand, are typically used for static content or content that doesn't change very often. Pages are typically included in your site's navigation menu, which is usually located at or near the top of the site. Some good examples of static pages are the About Us, Products, Services, or Contact pages that are found on most sites. If your site includes a blog, and it should, then you'll most often find yourself authoring new posts. So let's take a look at how to create a new post. From the toolbar, you can simply select Post from the New drop-down menu to enter the post creation area. You could also select the Add New subpanel underneath Posts in the navigation menu. Like the dashboard, you can completely customize this screen. You can minimize, click and drag meta boxes to new locations, or use the Screen Options tab to temporarily hide boxes that you rarely use. This lets you customize the panel in a way that works best for you. Now, let's create a new post. First, we'll enter a title. Next, I'll paste some content that I've created ahead of time. Now if you like, you can resize the editing area by simply clicking and dragging the bottom right hand corner downward. This gives you more room to compose your post. Notice that WordPress has automatically created a link to the post called the permalink. This is the URL or web address where our site's visitors will view this new post. You can edit this permalink to make the URL even easier to type and remember if you like. Now, if you've ever used a text editor like Microsoft Word, then you'll be right at home with the post editing area in WordPress. The buttons at the top of the edit pane allow you to simply format text by highlighting a word or phrase and then clicking the bold, italic, or strike through buttons to apply the formatting to the selected text. You can easily insert a bulleted or numbered list by clicking the button for the type of list you wish to create and then adding list items one at a time, hitting the return key to create each new list item. You can draw attention to special items like quotes by using the block quote button. And of course, you can also align text to the left, center, or right. Creating links is as easy as highlighting a word or phrase and then clicking the Insert Link button. Enter the URL where you want users to be taken when they click this link, a title which will provide more information when a user hovers their mouse over the link, and then choose whether you want this link to open in a new window or tab. Now, you can use this method to create a link to any website, but you can also easily link to existing content on your own site by simply choosing the page or post you wish to link to from the list at the bottom of the window. When you're finished, click Add Link, and this text will now function as a link. To remove the link, highlight or click anywhere within that link and then click the Unlink button. If you're creating a lengthy article, you might choose to display just the first paragraph or two on your main blog page, with a link that folks can click to continue reading the remainder of the article on its own page. Just click your mouse where you'd like the excerpt to end, and then click the More button. 
Any content below this divider will not appear on the front page of your blog, but it will appear when folks click through to the full view of this particular article. WordPress also includes a spell check utility with support for multiple languages. Once enabled, you can click the highlighted words for a list of suggested corrections. And if you prefer writing in a distraction-free environment, you'll love the full screen mode. You'll still have access to all the basic formatting tools, but when your mouse is stationary, everything else just disappears, allowing you to really focus on your content. When you're finished, simply move your mouse to the top of the page and exit full screen mode. Next to the full screen mode is a button called the Kitchen Sink, and clicking this button reveals a second row of additional formatting buttons, including paragraph and header styles, as well as underline, force justified text, and text colors. Now, here's one very important function to remember. If you plan to copy and paste content from Microsoft Word, then use the Paste from Word button, rather than simply pasting into the main edit window. This function will open a new window into which you can paste content that you've copied from Word, and WordPress will automatically clean your text, removing all the invisible formatting code that Microsoft Word uses, which is not standard HTML, and it could create real headaches for you down the road. You can also remove formatting from selected text, insert custom symbols or characters, indent text, and most importantly, undo and redo your most recent edits. And if you get into trouble, simply click the Help button to view additional documentation about the editor, including advanced editing tips and a list of keyboard shortcuts you can use to speed up your editing. In the top right corner of the edit window, there are two tabs, labeled Visual and Text. The Visual mode is the Rich Text, or WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get format in which we've been working. But if we select the Text mode, then we enter the Code Editor. And we can see that WordPress has been automatically inserting HTML code called Tags to apply styles to our text in a format that's understood by your web browser. Text mode replaces the WYSIWYG editor buttons with quick tags. The easiest way to format text in text mode is to highlight a word or phrase and then click the button representing the formatting you'd like to apply. And notice that WordPress automatically wraps your content with the appropriate opening and closing HTML tags. At any time, you can toggle back to the visual mode. Now, before we publish our post, it's a good idea to assign this post to a category. You can create multiple categories for your content, such as articles or press releases, which again will make it easier for your readers to find related content. You can also create new categories directly from this module, and any new categories you create here will be available for use in other posts. And you can select more than one category for a post to appear in. Last, let's enter a couple of tags to further categorize this post. Tags are like keywords, one-word summaries of your new post or article, and in most themes, they appear as links at the bottom of the article, enabling your readers to easily find other articles containing the same tag. In addition to categories and tags, we can also select a format for our post. The format determines how this post will be displayed on your site. For example, you could have a standard blog post with a title and paragraphs like we have here, or a short aside that omits the title and only displays a short text blurb. You can also display an image, a link to another website, a quote, or a simple status update. Now, these post formats are all available to theme developers, but you may see different post formats here, or none at all, depending on whether your theme supports post formats or not. It's also a good idea to choose a featured image for your article, which will add visual interest and also enhance your message to your readers. When you're ready to publish your post, the Publish module will be your last stop. You can choose to save a draft so that you can come back and work on this later, or click Preview to see what the post will look like when it's published. 
Status indicates the state of the post. Pending review means that the draft is waiting for review by an editor or administrator prior to publication. Draft means that the post has not yet been published and remains a draft for you. Visibility determines how your post appears to the world. Public posts will be visible to everyone who visits your site, and a sticky post will ensure that this post stays at the top of your blog page even after other posts are published. Password-protected posts are published, but visitors must first enter a password before they can view the post content. And private posts are visible only to you and the other editors or admins within your site. By default, your post will be published immediately, but you can also schedule a post to be automatically published at a future date or time. Or you can choose a date in the past to backdate posts. When you're happy with your settings, click the Publish button. WordPress will publish your new post to the database, and when we visit our site, our new post will now appear at the top of our blog page in chronological order. Now notice that only the excerpt appears, and when we click the Continue Reading link, we'll be taken to the full page view of this article. Now that you know how to create a new post, let's move on to the next topic, how to edit existing posts.